Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I rise tonight to urge a no on this vote. You know, vehicle pursuit has been one of the most talked about issues this session, really for the last two years since this body passed a no pursuit policy. And this, this is the best we can come up with. This doesn't do enough, not even close. This doesn't come close to protecting kids across the state and families are expecting us to protect them. This doesn't protect the kids in my district. Just ask 12 year old Hudson and his 14 year old brother Nash. They went up to Snoqualmie to go skiing only to later that day see their dad's vehicle all over the news every station. Their dad's business had been burglarized again the second time in a month. His vehicle stolen and used to run over two 12 year old girls. Just ask them. Ask 12 year old Amber Goldade and her best friend Kathleen Olson. I'm sorry but you can't because Amber Goldade is dead because police could not pursue the stolen vehicle used to run these two 12 year old girls over. They were doing nothing. Madam Speaker, what is more innocent than two 12 year old girls having a sleepover, going up to the school to play and walking back home? They're the victims of this no pursuit policy. And this, what's being proposed tonight, doesn't even come close to making our state safer. Many of the things that, that are covered in this bill, law enforcement can already do. Pursuing for domestic violence, law enforcement, it, it's not like that that typically happens in in a vehicle that's going down the street that's often happening you know at a home and law enforcement shows up and they can act there until we address stolen vehicles and property crimes washington will be a less safe place to live washington will be a less safe place to be a 12 year old kid and i don't even want to know whose name we're gonna be talking about next year when we come back and there are more victims because we're tying law enforcement's hand and not allowing them to pursue stolen vehicles. It's critical. Do not vote for this bill. All lives matter, Madam Speaker, and that's why I'm urging a no vote at this time. I so wanted to vote yes on something like this that would make an actual difference, that would restore sanity and safety to our streets and to our cities and to our citizens. But I can't do it. I can't vote yes on this. It doesn't get us there. I can't imagine being a police officer and then having this be delivered to me and say, hey, now it's easier for you to do your job. I cannot imagine from this legislation having it be any easier, having to walk on less pins and needles or eggshells doing my job wondering, is this, does this count? Is this covered under the RCW? Am I able to pursue this person? Was it aggressive enough? Was it, are they too far away? What, it, we have taken so many tools away from police officers in this state through legislation. And yes, sometimes the pendulum swings and we realize we have to make corrections. I don't see this as a satisfactory correction. I see it as something that would make us feel, me, would make me feel like I did something because I passed a bill, voted yes on a bill that says concerning vehicular pursuits, but I know the truth because I looked at the bill, Madam Speaker, and it's not there. It is not enough. It reminds me of the, the biblical account of Christ walking with his disciples. He said, look at this fig tree. It's all leaves and no figs. It's not good for anything can't even produce a single fig and yet it has these lush leaves it has a great title it has a lot of great words and yet it's not going to get us the safety and security that our people are asking I don't know if you check your email box from constituents madam speaker but I do and not a single person is asking us to go the other way they're they're asking us to restore the police ability to pursue and not go the other way please vote no so we can bring up something better for the citizens of Washington State. Thank you. I would love nothing more than to be supportive of this legislation. Goodness knows I have been outwardly speaking in favor of this. 
Madam Speaker, may I read for accuracy for a second? Please proceed. Um, this information goes back to uh, the beginning of this. I am a member of that committee. I remember the, uh, the committee hearings we've had, the um, information that came through the debates that we had. Madam Speaker, we warned from the beginning of this, the consequences. We warned what would happen when reasonable suspicion disappeared. We kept saying and saying vociferously that there were going to be people hurt and killed. Um, from the law enforcement, pursuant to Senate Bill 5352, as amended by the Senate, many felony offenses remain categorically ineligible for a vehicular pursuit, no matter the circumstances, including when hit and run death. Madam Speaker, that is something that happens, that I have been seeing happening in Spokane a lot. It's very, very concerning. Another issue that I'd like to point out, Madam Speaker, is again connected to this legislation. I voted a hard no on a bill that had to do with um, uh, theme, well, actually victims that have a firearm removed when a protection order uh, is involved. And very clearly, again, once again, this points out that under this legislation, they can't pursue, Madam Speaker. That's why I spoke up so hard about that particular issue because I saw it happen. They, pull, they, they pulled the firearms, there's the guy driving right behind the house. You pick up the phone to call 911 if you can get a police officer to respond only to find out they can't pursue. That victim is on their own in a place where the perpetrator knows where they are. So connected to this legislation, Madam Speaker, is very sincere concern for the safety of individuals. Another issue pursuant to this bill has to do with explosives. There can be uh, uh, buildings, cars, aircraft. Good member, you are out of time. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today to reluctantly urge a yes vote on this bill. Uh, Madam Speaker, I called my elected sheriff in Clark County earlier this evening, and he told me a story uh, under the current law and why it needs to get changed. You see, there was a potential kidnapping case earlier this week in Clark County, and they thought they had a description of the car, but they didn't have probable cause. No, they had reasonable suspicion, Madam Speaker. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, the driver took off, that car crashed. There was a very young child in that car that was quickly recovered by law enforcement and the suspect took off on foot. Madam Speaker, without this bill passing, they didn't have probable cause, but they could have reasonable uh, suspicion to go after that driver. But it's more than just that, Madam Speaker. This is a bill that has to be worked on in the future, even if it is passed tonight. Vehicle thefts in this state, according to the Washington State Patrol, over the last year are up 88%. That doesn't happen in a vacuum. And yet, even under this bill, vehicle thefts cannot be chased. An officer can see a vehicle being stolen, see the, the uh, criminal getting into that car and taking off. And under this, even under this bill, they won't be able to chase, Madam Speaker. We heard from the um, sponsor of this legislation about uh, uh, other legislation related to drag racing. And when I asked, well, can you chase under drag racing if police pursuit passes? Well, it was silence. Why? Because drag racing also isn't addressed in this bill, Madam Speaker. So it's better than what we have now, but it's not nearly good enough, Madam Speaker. I would urge a yes vote, but I would also urge this body in the future to think through 
what this bill leaves out and hopefully come to that. If the good. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So tonight we've heard that uh, this bill strikes a balance and that it will help keep people safe. It absolutely will not. And that is why I'm voting no on this bill tonight, Madam Speaker. This bill would continue to have or would continue to allow a exhaustive list of felonies and misdemeanors, including very frustratingly for people of our state auto thefts and many different kinds of assaults, too many to name off in this speech. As a father of kids with developmental disabilities, a, a police officer could not even pursue someone who tries to lure a child with developmental disabilities. And then it wouldn't allow them per, to pursue if someone were to try to sell that child. Madam Speaker, we heard about keeping communities safe. This has not kept my community safe. Just this session on Highway 16, a person with a stolen vehicle that transcended three different counties went the wrong way on Highway 16, almost fatally injuring one person and injuring another, going the wrong way after police could not pursue that person in that stolen vehicle. A stolen vehicle, Madam Speaker, that still police would not be able to pursue. We had a chance this session to do something more. And because of the title of this bill, we will see no amendments on this bill tonight. No chance for the three million people that my side of the aisle represents to try to amend this bill. Now, Madam Speaker, this policy has emboldened criminals. They actually call to get the police to not chase them. We have to do better than this, Madam Speaker. Our state wants to trust us, and what we do tonight will be a big signal as to whether they can trust me and you on this bill. I'm urging a no vote because I'm afraid, Madam Speaker, that if we pass this bill, we no longer will have an avenue to come back again and fix it even more urging a no. Thank you, Madam Speaker. From our side, we've heard some reluctant yeses and we've heard some reluctant noes. I am, Madam Speaker, among the reluctant noes. I want to fix our police pursuit problem. I want our, our police to be able to pursue criminals on a standard of reasonable suspicion and not the higher probable cause in all instances and use their own good judgment. Madam Speaker, permission to read some names? Please proceed. Delilah Minshew, age eight. Timothy Escamila, age six. And Immaculate Goldade, age 12. These children were killed because of the flawed policy that we passed in this legislature. Delilah and Timothy were killed in Eastern Washington because someone was going 111 miles per hour and the police were not able to pursue them. And he later, that person later, killed those children in a car wreck. Immaculate Goldade, age 12, we've heard about her before. She's from my district. She was killed while walking with her friend by a person who had a stolen vehicle that was not allowed, the police were not allowed to pursue earlier. Madam Speaker, these children would not be saved by the policy that we're intending to pass here. This policy does not go far enough. We need to, in the names of these children, we need to vote no on this policy and pass policy that will enable our police to do their jobs. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, since the day I was elected to be in this body, Madam Speaker, I have been talking about community policing and what is important when we look at policing overall and how that reflects in our community. Um, I've said since the day, hey, there's something wrong when our per capita of law enforcement officers are as low as they are. 
um, there's something wrong with the connection between the community and the officers. And then we've noticed um, recently with the passage of these policies and the one that we're talking about fixing here today is that that per capita rate has even decreased. We've lost more law enforcement officers. Um, we've ha heard a lot of statistics tonight on the House floor, um, but what really needs to be said is that violent crime is at an all-time high. Auto thefts are at 93% more this year. And more importantly, we all know that we are less safe. Our children know they are less safe. You don't see kids playing in the parks as much. We know that our adults and our elderly are less safe. They're scared in their homes. We know we are less safe when we go to the store. It's not a secret, Madam Speaker. We're less safe here at work. You just saw what happened the other day with, at our parking garage. Madam Speaker, we're less safe today, statistically, and we know it, we feel it in our homes, that we're less safe now. And this bill, and you heard these crimes and these people who's lost their lives tragically, it doesn't protect any of them. We have not talked about policy, Madam Speaker, that the the RCW on this bill will protect. We are not safer with this policy. And what's really important to note, Madam Speaker, and you heard it from the gentleman in the 35th district, you can buy and sell a child and a law enforcement officer will watch you drive by, Madam Speaker. You can watch somebody steal a vehicle and the law enforcement officer will watch you drive by. There are violent crimes, including violent crimes with a, with a firearm, Madam Speaker. You can buy, sell, loan, transport, possession of incendiary devices, property, uh, uh, weapons, guns, and you cannot stop them, Madam Speaker. You cannot with this policy. Madam Speaker, we need to go back to the way we, it, it was. And this policy itself, the House version of this policy many of us signed on to and agreed to, Madam Speaker, and that is a returning to common sense, and then let's talk about returning to community policing, because we don't do it here in Washington State. We do not have enough law enforcement officers per capita. We have single-handedly destroyed the ability for them to protect us in our homes, on the streets, in the playgrounds, in our schools. So we've heard, at first, I want to thank the good gentleman from the 45th for making sure that this bill moved through our committee. I know there was arguments to not do that, and I'm very grateful. I also want to thank the good women from the 42nd for creating something bipartisan that we could all, most of us, get behind and try to move forward with this policy. And I think that we need to realize that at the end of the day, vehicle pursuit probably is not partisan. We heard reasons tonight that there's yes, and there's reasons that there's no. We heard that children have died because of this policy. We've heard that the bill provides balance and we should vote for it. We've heard that we should, the task force created mistrust, which as you and I both know, are words all we have in these chambers. We've heard that this helps victims of crime, and then we've also heard that it's not enough. So at the end of the day, I think Again, this isn't partisan. We just all have to be safe in our communities. If we're not safe, nothing else matters. And I think that's what we often forget in the middle of politics. I, I'm grateful that we're not done talking about this. We've had discussions that this will continue, hopefully the day after we leave. Well, today is today, right? So I guess later today to make sure that this moves forward and get to a place where we can find full agreement and we can all be yes on policy that helps all of our constituents that we're blessed to serve. Madam Speaker, if law enforcement are brave enough to put on a uniform and to risk their life, to even take a bullet for strangers, then don't you think we need to be sure that they're able to continue to do their job? They're fighting to do their job. They're fighting to keep us safe. We have to help them. We have to do our job, which is to make sure that we give them all the tools that they need to do that. And we trust that balancing test. We know they're trained. We know they're gonna make a decision to keep people safest, whether it's pursuing or whether backing off. Madam Speaker, I agree with the good gentleman from the 11th. 
that this is a step forward. It's a small step forward. It's too small of a step forward. But at the end of the day, our job is to keep moving forward until we get to something that people agree on. And I am a yes tonight. I think that there's been a lot of work that went into this, and there's been a lot of stakeholder meetings trying to find balance. So I ask you to vote yes with me this evening.